To the Kobe Bryant Film Room, and uh, in this edition of the Kobe Bryant Film Room, this is Hellified Cap, right? So we're here, and uh, I wanted to go back in time to expose Nick Wright, right? Nick Wright, you ain't think I was gonna come for that ass, did you, boy? So I'm back in full effect to expose these clowns. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't on YouTube back then, so I couldn't react to this video, but I wanted to react to this video today. We got to get in that ass, y'all. No homo. <laughs> Pause. Uh, without further ado, let's get into it. Since it's his list, he's ranked just right for Nick Wright. But for me, <laughs> no, he's ranked too low. There's only three players that I would indisputably put ahead of him on any very subjective top 5, 50, 100, 3,000 list. And that's Michael Jordan. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and Bill Russell. So wherever you want to put anybody else, Four. Kobe Bryant would be wow. in my top five. But I really don't understand why we're starting with me and Kobe Bryant since we're talking about Nick's, Nick Wright's list. So you I see, just, Rick Buecher thinks highly of Kobe Bryant, mainly because he was there covering the team, right? So this is the thing, right? If you guys check my last video that I did on the Sports Century uh, Kobe Bryant, You'll see that Rick Buecher was in that documentary, documenting the career of a young Kobe Bean Bryant, right? So he has him very high on this list, right? Not too many people are above Bean. He's one of the honest journalists, you know what I'm saying? Even though we believe Bean is higher, that's fair, you know what I mean? Because you have other great players to take into consideration. Right, everybody's list is not going to be the same. Everybody's list is not supposed to be the same. But somehow, for whatever reason, Nick Wright thinks his list is the end all be all. And to promote Kobe Bryant is laughable. Uh, well, because I, I, but because of what you just I'm said, here. I'm here to participate. I'm gonna, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, well, Nick's maybe. list is bullshit, and I'm gonna explain to you to you why. In and I'm way. also gonna explain to you why he's not a good person as well. The reason we're starting with you is because if we started no. with me, it'd be like, yes, yeah. I agree with the list that I put together. Uh, okay. So I, so right. the real, listen, right. I, Kobe is six and it's the, it's the last 50 years. So Russell's ineligible. So the five guys who are left on the list, you know, and I won't reveal the order are obviously Kareem, Michael, LeBron, Magic, and Duncan. Those are the five guys who are ahead of him on the list. I am, I don't think it is worth spending time, at least a lot of time, on the fact that Rick Buecher just said he has Kobe Bryant ahead of LeBron James on his all-time. Well, he was ahead of LeBron James most of his career. Isn't that right, Nick? From 2003 to 2010, 11? Uh, Kobe was ahead of LeBron. LeBron really ain't take over the league till 2012. And then, what, how would you say Kobe's last great year was 2015? To, I mean, 2013, 2012, 2013 season, right? And there's been LeBron when? As far as, I'm talking about as far as, like, him just owning the league, owning the NBA. <clears throat> LeBron has really had a, only a couple of years of dominance before Golden State took over. You know what I'm saying? And then he won one in the middle of Golden State's reign to the top. But then it's been years since he won another one all the way up to 2020. <clears throat> from 2016 to 2020. So LeBron won 2012, 2013. Then uh, 13, 14, uh, uh, 14, 15, right? He lost. But he won in 16. 17, 18, 19, 
There's three more. So, okay, so where's this incredible reign that Nick writes and, and these guys are trying to make it seem like? If you ask me, <clears throat> the Steph Curry, LeBron James conversation is actually more closer than the Tim Duncan Kobe conversation. Because if you talking about championships, which they like to use Tim Duncan against Kobe as far as the championships, Tim Duncan won a championship in 99 and his other championship was in 2014. So in that span of time in the 2000s, Kobe, uh, uh, Tim Duncan only won three titles. In the span of 2000 to 2009-2010 season, Kobe won five titles. But even if you want to take away 2010, which you can't because it was an 09-10 season, it would be still four to three, right? But LeBron and Steph, Steph's played less time and has got more championships. If you want to do the championship thing, which I don't do, I'm just playing their stupid ass game that they play with Kobe and Duncan, right? So, okay, so now uh, let's continue. Because it is just such an indefensible mm. point. <laughs> like, the thing Kobe did the best was score, and LeBron scores more. The thing Kobe... LeBron scores more. How does LeBron score more? Le LeBron had a longer career. He's, a, he's more consistent at scoring the ball because he had a longer career. Kobe got injured, Right. LeBron doesn't score more than Kobe Bryant because if you look at the scoring records, he Kobe is a better scorer than LeBron. LeBron's only got one 60-point game his whole career. LeBron's basically a steady scorer. He's going to give you between 25, 30 points, right? He's steady. Kobe can literally give you – he has nights where he's dropping 50s. He's dropping 40s. He's dropping a whole bunch of 60-point games. I think um, they did uh, Steph Curry and um, LeBron's total 50-point games or 40-point games, and Kobe scored more 40 or 50-point games than both of them combined, right? So Kobe was an elite scorer, one of the greatest scorers of all time. LeBron is also in consideration, but he's not – he's a level below that. What they want to give him is every longevity – prize that there is known to man and we're not going to give them that because longevity even though it attributes to your greatness it doesn't show who you are as a player consistently theoretically is better than lebron at his shooting except lebron has a better efficiency oh nick that's on layups except he also shoots a better three point percentage the thing kobe did this is stupid shit and he's he's using the generational gap Right. And a lot of a lot of uh, dick riders do this. Right. Because LeBron shoots more threes per game in this generation, they try to go back to the 2000s where Kobe barely shot threes to the, in the 90s and the 2000s. And they use that in the total percentages. It's a bullshit and disingenuous argument. But we're going to show you how disingenuous Nick is. The best was clutch shots, except LeBron has mm. five playoff buzzer beaters. And Kobe has one, and that disregards the fact that yeah. everything else to do with basketball, Clutch, LeBron you. was better at it. I mean, okay, well, well, I mean, again, <laughs> so Wilds, you can shake it's your head at it because again, you've been great. Hey, Wilds is funny as shit. Let me go over Wilds. Wilds is funny. It's yeah. Everything else to do with basketball, Clutch, LeBron you. was better at it. And see, you see his face. That's the face everybody has. You know what I'm saying? Because it's a stupid argument. I mean, okay, well, well, I mean, again, so Wilds, you can shake your head at it because, again, you've been brainwashed by it. Kobe has won. We've seen it on a loop for a hunt for 20 years. Kobe's one career playoff buzzer beater where he didn't pan to mind the Michael celebration. LeBron's got five of them, but I don't even want to LeBron debate. LeBron played fucking 20. Look, look, listen, listen, bro. LeBron came in since he was 18 years old, starting with the ball in his hand. <clears throat> he's supposed to have the uh, he's supposed to be up there in buzzer beaters. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, bro, he played a long ass fucking time. Kobe versus LeBron, because I don't think it's interesting. The and Kobe some of the games were unnecessary to have buzzer beaters in because the games weren't close. First Duncan thing I think is interesting because I think there's a real argument there. 
and I am Duncan ahead of him. Of course and you I'm do. Of course you do. Very, I'm, I'm surprised. I had, that, a, I had a bunch of clowns. I was reading the conversation. I might do a part two to the Duncan Wildest comments uh, video because uh, this one dude was like, "Yeah, I take." The conversation was like Duncan versus Olajuwon. He's like, yeah, I'll take I'll take Duncan over a large one any day. Duncan's the better player. I'm like, I'm looking at them niggas like, bro, nobody, and I mean nobody, thought Tim Duncan was ever a better player than Hakeem Olajuwon. Ever. Not even his own fucking teammates. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's disgusting what these guys are doing to basketball, bro. Two guys who played in the same era, and that Duncan, with a higher degree of difficulty, had how the fuck did he do with a higher degree of difficulty? His first championship was in '99. Patrick Ewing got hurt. That was a gimme championship during a lockout season, right? A shortened season, right? Then he went on and he won in 2003. He did. He won in 2005. But Ginobili, Parker, all those guys, he was playing beside David Robinson. By the way, guys, the Spurs team was not bad. David Robinson had gotten hurt, and the Spurs decided to tank to get Tim Duncan, right? Purposely tank, right? And so they got Tim Duncan, and they paired him with David Robinson, who was really good at the time. He's still good, even though he's older, right? You had Avery Johnson, who was a hell of a point guard that, that year they won. Uh, 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 Sean Elliott, one of the better three-point shooters in the league, right? Shooting, I think, 40-something 40 percent. Shooting threes in the, like, killing it from three. Killing it from downtown, right? And in the uh, postseason, right? Then you had 2007, where Tony Parker literally led the Spurs because Tim Duncan had a bad series. Then he didn't win all the way up to 2014, when it was Manu, Ginobili, Kawhi, a young Kawhi Leonard, and Tony Parker. Like, let's cut this shit about this fucking difficult road. He never had the responsibility of scoring the amount of points that Bean had to score. You know what I'm saying? All, all in the whole, um, in the whole. Meanwhile, having to be all defensive first team, guarding the other team's best players consistently night after night. He had that responsibility on defense, but he didn't have the responsibility of Bean had on offense, right? And and and. He never played without a Hall of Famer, right? So cut this shit out. Bean had to win with a whole different new team. A whole new team after Shaq left. That's more difficult. Winning back-to-back -back is more difficult than winning once and then lo uh, losing for a couple of years, winning again, and then losing for a couple of years, and then winning again. Winning back-to-back -back is di is harder than than. All those runs Tim Duncan had. Ever had a down year. 50 Stop wins. It. Stop it. Every single year of his career. The playoffs every single year of his career. The only year, year he didn't win. He played with Hall of Famers every single year of his career. You see what I'm saying? And so because other people ain't playing with Hall of Famers and they don't win 50 games, that means a nigga better than them? So that means Tim Duncan's better than LeBron then. Using that logic. Right? Oh, no, not with Nick Wright, because Nick Wright's a hypocrite, and he's up there for clutch sports. And we're going to expose some things, y'all. 50 was when the season was 50, and he won the title that year. That that you would argue yeah. that Kobe is ahead of Duncan. Like, the LeBron thing, it's just, unless we all have our blind spots, that's fine. But at, our, Kobe ahead of no, Duncan not. is interesting no, to me. No, it's I'm curious. It's ridiculous, bro. Like... What has LeBron done that was so special that puts him ahead of Kobe? I still don't get it. Like, I, don't, I still don't get it. Now, he won in 2016, but the, the Warriors were damn near in the infirmary. You know what I'm saying? And then you look at, what, 2018? He lost. So, we, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to hype up making it to the finals. Well, shit, Jerry West should be in, the, in, in everybody's top three. If we're going to do that, and Jerry West was a hell of a player. This is not to disparage Jerry West, but I'm just showing you the logic. If the logic is winning, then you would have to put Bill Russell in this conversation. And even though he admitted Bill Russell, right, 
He said the last 50 years, I guess he don't want to count Bill Russell because I'll put LeBron, he'll have to explain why he doesn't have Russell above Duncan to fit his bullshit narrative. But if you're going off stats, it's Wilt. If you're going off rings, it's Russell. Like, if you are you going off the individual or are you going off the team, sir? Because the Spurs were winning 50 games before Duncan got there. Facts. Why? I don't, okay, sure. Then no problem. Uh, but I'm curious why you think I'll lump, I'll is lump all this Duncan. together. I'll lump all this together for you. Show him, Rick. Get his ass, Rick. I'll answer. I'll answer both of those. First of all, I, I, the, the, there is the difficulty of when you're talking about different eras to make comparisons. The competition was different. The game was different. Exactly. The defense is different. The person guarding you is able to do different things. So the percentages are not going to be the same. So when all these niggas try to jump to LeBron's era, to Kobe's era, to compare LeBron and jump Kobe's era, to go to Mike's era, the defenses were the same. It wasn't the same. The rules were uh, uh, way different. You know what I'm saying? Zones compared to uh, illegal defense rules. Uh, fucking hand checking compared to no hand checking. Right? Big men play. The offense was played from the inside out. Now it's from the outside in. It's a whole fucking different game. And, and this fool's trying to just look at percentages, which is what dumb niggas do who don't know basketball. They just look at percentages and read the stats and say, well, he shot this percentage. Yeah, but nigga, against who? The nigga's wide open half the goddamn game because nobody's, playing, nobody's hustling to play defense. Goes down the lane, no rim protection. So we're going to talk about rim protection in this era? Let's talk about rim protection in this era, Right? Oh, that percentage ain't that as as impressive as it would be in the other area eras. Now I want you guys to take a look at this, right? We look at Le LeBron's great field goal percentage, right? Because that's what they hang their hat on. What was that field goal percentage in the two thousands? It, it wasn't above fifty. It was around. I think it was right at forty seven, damn near forty eight. Still great, but he's laying up the ball. He's getting to the rack. It's still a great percentage, but it's not what it is now. Right? It's not what it is now. He's not shooting the ball. When you shoot the ball, you're going to have a little bit of a lower percentage. Kobe's field goal percentage during the 2000s was 46%, guys. Don't let these fucking clowns fool you. And Kobe was taking what they call awful shots. Right? What they call bad shots. And he was shooting more threes. Right? He was shooting more threes than Jordan. Right? So his percentage would dip in an era where everybody's percentage dip. See, they want to make it seem like it's just a Kobe thing. Look at Allen Iverson. Look at T-Mac. Look at all the, his contemporaries. They all shot similar percentages. And they were jump shooters. They weren't just driving the ball. Mainly, LeBron was just driving the ball. He was not shooting a whole bunch of threes. Let's stop the bullshit. Et cetera, et cetera. So we always reduce these things to numbers. Even if we take accolades, we reduce it to numbers. Three MVPs versus two MVPs, whatever it might be. And that looks nice, but it's not reality. Rick, Rick Buecher is the only smart nigga that they chose to keep on TV. I don't know why they chose to keep him around. But he's the only intelligent one who tries to make an intelligent argument for basketball. The val the the what I have is the benefit that I have is that I saw Tim Duncan, Kobe Bryant, and LeBron James all play. They have eyes, just like the rest of us, and they try to dismiss what we've seen with our own eyes. Which we're not gonna allow them to do, y'all. We just ain't gonna allow them to do it. Entire careers. That shit and over so, with. It's not a matter of me having to measure numbers or accolades or all of that, because I'm conscious of all of the variables that are involved. But you don't want to get into LeBron. We'll put that aside, because we're never going to solve that between the two of us. When it comes to Duncan and Kobe, it's simply this. It's that, yes, you're the Duncan never had a down year, okay, but he was also with a franchise that didn't have down years because of the way they're run. Because of they him. were ran way better than the Lakers. And it's not because of him. R.C. Buford and those guys had a culture, which Greg Popovich and R.C. Buford 
the owners were the leaders. The owner and the coach was a leader of the franchise. Meaning, till this day, if you come in to Coach Pop's team, you're going to play Coach Pop's way. Coach Pop is the leader. It's almost like going to Miami, right? You have uh, Pat Riley in Miami, right? And he has a culture of, hey, you get there, you're going to work out. You know what I'm saying? You're going to be fit. You gonna, your ass going to be in shape. You're not going to be able to bullshit the way you've been doing it all over the uh, in the other uh, cities. You know what I'm saying? Here on this team, you're going to work out, you're going to be in shape, and you're going to be professional. That's leadership from, from that level. During that time, the leadership of the Lakers wasn't great. They, they were rebuilding, sir. On purpose, with, with a superstar, uh, with a top-level talent of Kobe Bryant, all-time top-level talent on their team. They were rebuilding the franchise with young players. Second-year player in Karan Butler, Lamar Odom. Then you had Chris Mim from the fucking Cavs. You had Luke Walton, who was in his, what, uh, uh, second year? Like, get the fuck out of here, man. Coach, and they had the same coach. Kobe didn't have that. Kobe didn't have that experience. Like he didn't have fuck the starters. <laughs> y'all, y'all, y'all see the starters, Kwame Brown, and then fuck the starters. Y'all talking about how terrible they are. Look at the bench of the Lakers. Fuck the starters lineup. Look at the bench. At that nucleus, <laughs> it, there were a lot of changes made in terms of coaching and personnel over the course of his career. I simply look at the accomplishment of hell. It's winning. more. It's more um, amazing to rebuild. And, and roll with a brand new team than to consistently play with uh, three guys your whole career or two guys your whole career. <laughs> three in a row and then two in a row and how difficult that is physically and mentally. Exactly. And that's one of the, the, the downsides of when I look at Duncan and the Spurs. He never went back to back. You couldn't repeat. Listen, repeating as champion, defending your title puts you in a whole different stratosphere as a basketball player because that means you have a dynasty. And I know people are going to get mad at this, but I don't know if the Spurs are a dynasty. It depends on your definition, right? If your definition as a dy of, of, of a dynasty is they won for five years or whatever the case may be, or they were in contention every throughout the whole decade, I understand. But if your definition of a dynasty is winning back to back, right, then that would be Kobe Bryant. He would have another dynasty. He would have two dynasties, which has never been done in the history of basketball, right? So just, just to write that off as if everybody could do it is bullshit. And that's just an ordinary thing. And that winning 50 games is better than having two dynasties? No, no, sir. Absolutely not is that they never won back-to-back -back championships. They never dominated beyond one season. And knowing the toll that that takes, the challenge that that is. And by the way, Kobe did that twice. That, uh, that stands as a huge, huge accomplishment. And I also believe that Kobe is vastly devalued for his contribution and what he meant to the first uh, three-peat team. With the, with, with the Lakers. Kobe was as much the closer as Shaq was Rex. the starter on that team. And whether it was in the finals or whether it was during the regular season, Kobe was as important to those championships as Shaquille O'Neal was. And I feel like as if, as, as we move on, it has become, he was definitely the second banana and he was I right. absolutely disagree with, with, with that assessment, but you know, I, I agree with Rick Buecher, but I disagree with the fact that people say that. You know what I'm saying? Because Rick Buecher knows that during that time, bro, they were a one-two punch. They, like, Kobe was just as good as Shaq. You know what I'm saying? In a different way. He was doing his damage on the perimeter. That's what made them, like, dangerous. Kobe would do his damage on the perimeter. Shaq did his damage from the inside. And in Shaq's coattail. There was no carrying going on. And I will never... I will never give in to the idea of that. All right, uh, Rick, I, I do agree with Nick's list. Uh, I think Kobe is Kobe. Of, of course you do. Of course you do, Clutch Sports. <clears throat>
is they're actually, from Ohio. The only reason why, okay. Rated at sixth. Um, in addition to LeBron ahead of him, Duncan ahead of him, I got Magic ahead of him. I'm surprised you you had Kobe ahead of Magic. I think Magic is clearly the greatest Laker. Magic made nine finals. These guys don't want Kobe to have what? anything. You know what I'm saying? Is he even going to explain why Kobe uh, 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 Kobe shouldn't be higher? At least give an explanation. Oh, seasons with the Lakers. You know, before he retired and you know came back later for a bit, um, he carried to a large degree an older Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. You hear this clown? Carry the older Kareem. He just carried Kareem. Are you in this clown? One of the greatest players of all time. So you're diminishing Kareem. So why is Kareem so high if he got carried? The second part of the Showtime dynasty, um, he made his teammates better. Everyone. And see. I have since iPhone 15 Pro. Oh, that's bullshit. New and existing customers can get the iPhone 15 Pro with titanium. Amazing. We're amazing. Get the new iPhone 15 Pro with titanium on us now. Get the freedom to upgrade every year. Only in t Everyone. And look, guys, it's bullshit because, not because Magic didn't make his teammates better, because Mag Magic absolutely made his teammates better. But it's bullshit because he's trying to make it seem like Kobe never made his teammates better. Everyone who played with Kobe got better or left better than what they came in playing with Kobe, right? Everybody, Lamar Odom has his best seasons playing with Kobe. Pau Gasol had his best years playing with Kobe, right? Um, you had, uh, 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 who else? Who else? Derek Fisher, best years playing with Kobe. You know what I'm saying? Shaq's best years playing with Kobe. You know what I'm saying? So where's all this uh, Lamar Odom's best years playing with Kobe? I, I don't know if I said Lamar already. Uh, Andrew Bynum's best years playing with Kobe. So I don't understand where this uh, nobody gets better playing with Kobe shit is about. Because Trevor Ariza was, was better playing with Kobe. Um, so I don't, I don't get it. They're just making shit up. Could shine. Uh, Kareem could be uh, his maximum self. James Worthy could be his maximum self. Byron Scott. Yeah. And they... Magic, as great as Magic was, and I'm a Magic Johnson fan. He's he's my favorite point guard of all time. As great as Magic was, he never won without Kareem. Kobe won without Shaq twice back to back. He played with Magic, and we've seen rarely have we seen superstars. And particularly, Kobe won more fit, beat more fifty win teams than Magic did in his whole career in two years. In this era, be able to do that. Um, so I would have Magic ahead of him. Uh, Duncan, I, look, you made some great points because that is the not Duncan they never repeated. But Duncan didn't have the supreme talent, particularly with Shaq, that Kobe well, had. As a, as a collective, he did. Like, we had to knock this shit off, bro. He had an all-defensive team member in Bruce Bowen. He played with Sean Elliott. He played with Tony Parker. He played with Manu Ginobili. He played with David Robinson. We played with a young Kawhi Leonard. Like, bro, we got to stop acting like this nigga ain't had nobody on his fucking team. He had a good team. Like, this is bullshit. The Spurs won 50 games without his ass after he retired. The rap was kind of on the tail end. For their first couple championships. He was still they, one of the greatest defensive players in the history of the league. See, they, what they do is, with David Robinson, they don't tell these young kids who David Robinson was. David Robinson was be, one of the best rim protectors in NBA history. Throwing shit out in the gym. They were called the Twin Towers for a reason. You couldn't fucking score on them. Matter of fact, when people say, oh, Duncan can't, uh, uh, Duncan uh, manhandled Shaq or whatever, Duncan's matchup was a Shaq. Duncan's matchup was a smaller Robert Ory. Guess who was guarding Shaq? D-Rob. David Robinson was guarding Shaq. Well, we need to stop with these, this fucking bullshit, bro. Manu and Tony Parker are great, but they're not the supreme talent that players. Tony had when he won back-to-back -back championships. Hold on. Yep, Hold see, on. Oh, crickets. Crickets up this bitch. He only had pow. That's it. Lamar Olin was okay. Right? He was a good player off the bench. But he wasn't this all-star, a superstar people trying to make him out to be. Andrew Bynum, I know what you clowns going to say. What about Andrew Bynum? Andrew Bynum was hurt and barely played. He struggled. 
He was limping throughout the series. Well, well first of all, he won, he won three. He made Lamar Odom a better player. He made Lamar Odom a better player. And, and, and to say, to say See, Shaq. And what, and what Chris Broussard is going to do is over talk Rick. Rick's telling the truth. Was it the number right. one guy is revisionist history? Now, I'm not going to diminish Kobe. I'm with you on that. Let's Rick not... was there. Look, look at Rick's face. <laughs> Rick's, Rick's looking at this nigga like, yeah, yeah, you're taking the check. Like, bro, we watched this shit. We were there. Rick was there. Rick was there more than I was there. Rick was on. Rick was actually there. <laughs> and this nigga, look at this nigga. <laughs> Diminish Kobe and say he look was Rick's riding like, Shaq's car. Look at Rick's like, yo, you fucker. <laughs> oh, tails. But to say it was even? And it you was got it even. Plus? It was even. Now, 2000, the reason why you say it wasn't even is because you're looking at Kobe as if he should have took over when it was unnecessary to take over. Kobe took over in the Blazers series. It was Shaq's turn to take over against the Pacers, right? Shaq had the mismatch. I, that's an overstatement. It was Shaq as the hub. Uh, I said, and, and the other thing about said, here's the thing about they won't Kobe, let the nigga talk. You see this clutch sports, ladies and gentlemen. Kobe, that's hey, a, hey, I'm a, I'm a, uh, like I said, y'all, y'all gonna come on this page one day. Y'all gonna see hundreds of videos, and y'all gonna see that one video at the top saying the LeBron James film room. Welcome to the LeBron. Hold on, I gotta practice that. Welcome to the LeBron James film room. I want to thank Rich Paul. Um, for uh, uh, supplying the checks, I want to thank Nick Wright and Chris Broussard. <laughs> That's a I have a real issue with Kobe's. I mean, like I said, I got him sick, so I got him high. But Kobe was not efficient, Rick. And no, that man, is man. a he shot. Yeah, Rick knows what this shit is about. Rick knows what this shit is about. Rick looking at the niggas like, how you gonna do this? Look at Wilds. <laughs> <laughs> them niggas be looking like they tired of the bullshit. 44% for his career. He never shot 47%. He knows. Race. And see, the, the reason why Rick has this look on his face while looking at Chris Broussard, because he knows what he's doing. See, the younger generation, they're not going to pick this up. They're going to say, yeah, that's right, because they're fans of LeBron, and they want LeBron to be as high as possible. They want LeBron over Jordan, LeBron over the world. Right? They don't care about history. They don't care about facts. But Rick is looking at this motherfucker like, bro, you know it's a different era. You knew Kobe. You know, because you were there, you know Kobe played in the dead ball era where scoring was at an all-time low and percentages dropped. And the NBA had to increase the rules to get people's percentages up and increase scoring throughout the league. You you were there. Season. And that's playing eight years with Shaq, drawing double and triple teams in his prime. So that is one of the major no, things. Okay, Rick, Rick's like, and that's another lie, right? So Chris Broussard just keeps throwing shit at the wall, hoping it sticks. Rick's sitting there like, okay, that's another lie because Shaq wasn't just doubled and triple team and Kobe was wide open. I show, I'm showing you guys the games, y'all. That's not how it went down. Kobe was double teamed at times too, just like Shaq. They're lying because they know that people are going to look at Shaq like this big monster and say he was always double team and triple team. Remember, game one of the Pacers series, it was basically single coverage with Rick Smith, right? They didn't double to after Shaq really got off and start fucking them up. But they double teamed Kobe at times, right? But Kobe ain't really need to get off. He just kept giving the ball to Shaq. You know what I'm saying? That particular game. But we got game four. You know what I'm saying? Where Kobe showed out. You know what I'm saying? So they're trying to make it seem like Kobe didn't contribute. Some games with Shaq, some games with Kobe. You know what I'm saying? A lot of it went to Shaq because why? Shaq had the advantage. And in basketball, let me let me ask you guys this, right? You guys ever played basketball at the park? And you got a nigga who's six foot two, six foot three, maybe six foot four. And he's being guarded by a guy who's 5'5", five, 5'6", five, 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 What the fuck are you going to do every single time down floor? Because he has a size advantage and a weight advantage, you're going to dump the ball down to him. You're not going to just take these unnecessary jump shots. 
Because if Kobe had taken those unnecessary jump shots, Chris Broussard and Rick, uh, 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 and Nick Wright would sit there and say, see, he's selfish. That has, to me, a LeBron and a Duncan, I know Duncan's a big guy, but a LeBron in particular, ahead of Kobe, is that he was far more efficient, which makes it easier for your teammates to play around you. Yeah, Third. but he lost, he lost less. And actually, his teammates... It wasn't easy for them to play around. They're just making shit up. Chris Chris Bosch talked about how hard it was to adjust his game. Kevin Love had uh, uh, had unlimited pressure on him about how, having to perform and adjust his game. You know what I'm saying? All these guys had to adjust their games around LeBron James. If you're not like a scoring type guard, it's hard to adjust your game around LeBron. Russell Westbrook had a hard time adjusting his game around LeBron. These guys, they just make shit up. And this is recent history. We just seen this shit. It's, it's, it, Anthony Davis is having a more difficult time adjusting this game around LeBron. You know why? Because Anthony Davis is not getting the touches he normally would get if he was on another team. If he was on another team where the ball would kept going to him down low and he was able to eat, he would put up bigger numbers. But he has to split that time with LeBron James. The Lakers have not really been that successful since in LeBron's stint in L.A. as the media tries to hype it up to be. It's ridiculous. All right, there's a few things I want to say off top because I do want to drill into the dunk. Why does he need more uh, so much help? If he's such as better, if players could just get on the team and play with him, why do you need so many trades? Like, this shit's wrong. This fucking, Thanks. like, lies, bro. The, the LeBron part is, a, a, just objectively speaking, an insane opinion to hold. The magic part, I didn't even think about it, is an equally <laughs> insane opinion to hold. Magic Johnson played 12 seasons in this league pre-HIV. Nine of those seasons he went to the finals, and nine of those seasons... How many championships did he win, sir? Five. And they got their ass whooped by the... Uh, no, they got their ass whooped by Houston, the team they were supposed to beat. Either one MVP of the league or finished second or third. Now, we want to say Magic didn't yeah, play long. See, they want to count these opinionated awards. Uh, MVP is opinionated again. You could argue some of them finals MVPs Kareem should have won. Long enough, so be it. Now, I have Kobe ranked ahead of Shaquille O'Neal because of the longevity of it. That second, th the back the real, A real conversation would be Shaq and LeBron, to be honest with you. All that's fair. Like, all, and what he accomplished in his career. In those three championship runs, those three NBA finals. And see, they, they, they double teamed Rick, too. Y'all catch on to that? They double teamed his ass. Instead of having a one on one, they had the two on one. But it's all good. Need a closer because the games were not close and the series were not close. That's because a lie. You see what I'm saying? So, y'all go back and watch how Kobe closed off a lot of those games. We're going to cover this. Nick Wright's a motherfucking liar. Those games were close, especially in the uh, in the Western Conference Finals. And those that game was close when Kobe closed it, closed it out in Game 4. I just covered this shit. The game was close. The game was even close in Game 1. The Reggie Miller played like shit, and the game was still in reach till the last couple of moments. Like, this dude is a motherfucking liar, bro. He's a bad... He's not a good person, bro. Because a good person is not going to lie about something you can see with your own fucking eyes on camera, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's bullshit. It's bullshit. The game... Bro, the games weren't close. Shaquille O'Neal... Fucking... Bro, the, 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 the Kings went down to the wire. The, the Portland series went down to the wire. Across those three NBA finals. Oh, he's talking about just the finals. <laughs> it's fitting because Shaq had the mismatch against a weak Eastern Conference. It's fitting he would just use the finals. Average 30. He's not going to go against common sense with telling him he had the toughest competition. Right? And whoever came out the, the East was going to beat the, uh, the, whoever came out the West was going to beat the East ass. Six, 15. Bro, Portland, Rasheed Wallace talks about this. Uh, uh, him and Bonzi Wells. Y'all go check out Rasheed Wallace and Bonzi Wells' podcast. They talk about how if they would have came out the West, they were beating uh, Indiana. They would have whooped their ass. You know what I'm saying? Everybody would knew 
And that's why they were so hurt by losing to the Lakers. Them and the Kings, because they knew if they went to the finals, they beating whoever's ass is in the East any fucking ways. The championship was won in the Western Conference Finals. Now, Nick is trying to use his imagination in order to discredit Kobe. And it's not going to work because Rick is too good. Four and three on 60%. And after the first finals that went six, they never nuts. had a team. You see that? And this, is, this is a new thing. Rick is an old school uh, 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 journalist, right? He doesn't just go off numbers. We never went off numbers back then, not just pure numbers, because Shaq would have been better than Jordan if we went off just pure statistics, right? We know that there's intangibles that come with the game that Shaq does not have, right? That he can't have just based on who he is. It, what, what, bro, or, or Rick, he, as a basketball the number, player, yo, as a basketball player. First, here's the thing. As and Shaq as doesn't it, deny, matter of fact, Shaq does not deny this. He admits all of his flaws. Bro, you heard in the documentary I just went over uh, 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 right before this video, you heard that Shaq said that Kobe Bryant was the best player in the NBA in 2001. But these fools are telling you it, 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 they, it, they weren't even. Sports, you keep a score. The numbers are going to tell part of the story. As long as it's not figure skating, and it's just like, we're going to watch a play, and then, you know... <laughs> and, uh, mm, you're figure skating like a motherfucker, so... You draw, you're judging. As long as it's like how many points you score, then how many points someone scores does tell part of the story. But I want to talk about Duncan for a second. Stay here with me on Duncan. Not Kobe versus shit. This Duncan because, shit is asinine, bro, because nobody was saying this shit before last year. David Robinson was amazing in 99 when they won their first time. In 03, David Robinson averaged eight points per game. You see right. what he's and, doing? He's ignoring the defensive side of the ball, and he's, he's ignoring all the other teammates. He's just focusing on that one nigga that, so he can discredit what Kobe accomplished. 05 and 07, could, just like you said with Kobe, not another top 75 player for his two rings in 9 and 10, Duncan did not have a top 75 player in 05 and 07. You see they, how he skipped over Tony Parker and Tony Parker being, since he cares so much about the fucking MVPs, he would have told y'all that Tony Parker was 2007 finals MVP and Duncan played like shit. See, he didn't talk about how Duncan played. He talked about how Duncan won, but he didn't talk about how Duncan played. But when it comes to Kobe, he likes to ignore that Kobe didn't win with, uh, 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 Kobe won with Pau Gasol against the stacked Celtics team, right? He didn't. He didn't say nothing about that with four Hall of Famers. If Rasheed, if Rasheed Wallace, if Rasheed Wallace makes the Hall of Fame, that'll be five Hall of Famers. Championship they run in 2014. David or Tim Duncan was a year removed from being first team, first team All NBA. And this idea of well, he had Greg Popovich. He was older. And see, this is bullshit. He was playing. Oh my God. Kobe had Phil Jackson. Well, Duncan had uh, had Manu and Tim for a good part of it. Kobe had Shaquille O'Neal. Like the the idea. And why did Kobe have to go through a brief portion of his career? So now, without... instead of saying Magic had Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, they don't do that. They only do that shit with Bean, right? Bean's not allowed to play with nobody. Right? He's supposed to play his whole career with Kwame Brown and Smush Parker. Meanwhile, everybody else wins championships. Absolutely Phil not. Phil Jackson. Well, ask Phil Jackson, who wrote in his book that Kobe was one of the reasons he left. Couldn't do. And he came back and he won two more championships. Shut your ass up. With it anymore. Now, again, I have him six in the last 50 years. I have massive respect for what he accomplished. No, you don't. But because you're shitting on what he accomplished. And this is why Rick Bucher has that sick smirk on his face. The consistency of Duncan, not to mention, and I should have said this earlier, 15 all they win, all look, This is how these clowns win the argument. They win the argument by not letting Rick talk. <laughs> they double teamed them, got more airtime to him, and then give him probably, what, 10 seconds to respond? All defensive teams, and I would argue, the second best defensive player of the last 50 years behind only Dream. Like, I, 
the could, he accomplished everything Kobe did just a little bit more and under, under a little bit tougher circumstances. That's a motherfucking lie. Yeah, well, look, Philip may have full of shit. Last or decided to leave because his response was priceless. <laughs> second best defensive player of the last fifty years behind only Drake. Look at his response. Like I, I the, look at his response. How you how you respond to all these lies, bro? The only thing he told the truth about is that him being behind Dream as the second best defender. That's the only thing he told the truth about. He accomplished everything Kobe did, just a little bit more and under, under a little bit tougher circumstances. Yeah, well, look, Phil may have left or decided to leave because of Kobe. I wouldn't buy everything that, uh, that Phil said in that book. But he also came back because of Kobe. Because he saw the opportunity sure. to win with Kobe Bryant. You didn't mention that. What do you mean, sure? Shut your bitch ass up. You didn't mention that shit. You tried to hide that shit from the public and leave it as it was, like Phil left Kobe and, and said he was uncoachable, he's bad, he's this, he's that. But why he come back? That's like a woman leaving your house complaining, uh, she's sick of you, she's done with your shit, and then she come back to live with you. Get the fuck out of here, bro. Where their personal relationship is and the difference in that between Popovich and Tim Duncan's relationship. Now we're getting off the board it's into off basketball. It's not about basketball. It's about who you like, who who people like more. Who very very intangible elements. I'm so hey, hey, see, this is the real world drama type shit that he's trying to get into. He's trying to get into the soap opera shit. Oh, well, he got along. They held hands in practice. Like, bro, who gives a fuck? We're result driven. You know what I'm saying? They're going to tell you. You don't want the numbers or the intangibles? The intangibles are greater than numbers. Damn, Nick Wright, you're a, you're a, you're a, God, you're a, you're a, you special, bro. I ain't even going to call you what I wanted to call you. You special, bro. Intangibles are greater than numbers, bro. Your mother is greater than the numbers you pick up. This is why you guys get on AD, ain't it? Because of his intangibles? Right, because he has all the talent in the league, right? But his intangibles, everybody's let down a little bit, right? What about what about Ben Simmons' intangibles? Could he do everything on the floor? Yes, except for shoot, he's not aggressive. You know, at the mindset, mentality is intangibles, right? Intangibles is one of the most important things about basketball. Do you have the mindset to close games? Do you have the the, the guts and the aggressiveness to shoot last second shots, right? To take over in the fourth quarter, right? What about heart playing through injuries? These are intangibles, bro. Fuck you guys trying to take intangibles out of basketball. Hell no. And just go off a stat sheet. Y'all kids, if y'all watching this, man, and I'm talking about like guys in their teenage years who want to play basketball, bro. Intangibles is is better than stats, better than numbers, bro. Because I guarantee you that Bruce Bowen did not have no great stats. And I guarantee you that Derek Fisher stats sucked. Right? But guess what? Guess what they brought to the table? Winning. Heart, desire, Robert Ory, passion, winning, desire, clutch, right? Intangibles, things that don't show up on the stat sheet. When you see uh, Robert Ory, you're not going to see a whole bunch of blocks, a whole bunch of steals. You're going to see lockdown post defense, though. You're going to see great, great positioning, right? That's what you're going to see when you see these guys. Don't let them take intangibles out the game. Fuck these guys. Fuck these clowns. What are you talking about? Draymond Green stats don't pop out on paper, but they praise these same clowns because I guess Draymond Green is a clutch sports client. These same clowns will praise Draymond Green as his all-time great defender, but he does not have great statistics. He does not have great uh, uh, defensive numbers. He don't. So like, let's stop the bullshit. And Shaq, we can't use stats or all play. Yeah. And if I step back, I saw them. I saw them all play. And if you ask me, who would I take? 
to start my team. Who do I think was the best player based on seeing them play in all sorts of situations up close, not on TV, up close. Yeah, yep, see, you see how he's relying on them? Nigga, I was there, bitch. I'm taking Kobe Bryant. Thanks for and watching. I'm, and I'm taking Kobe Bean too. And I and I bet you a lot of y'all watching this video would too. But even if you take LeBron, that's okay. Even if you take Duncan, that's okay. But back then, it's not ridiculous to say uh, Kobe. They're trying to make it seem like, oh, <laughs> that's utterly ridiculous. Like, man, you fucking pricks, bro. But anyways, um, Nick Wright is a capping ass nigga. He had Michael Jordan fuck his list because he's dishonest. He had Michael Jordan number one. Uh, and I have the tweet to show, to prove it. And I'm going to upload that tweet as the thumbnail of this video. So here we go. I am the NBA Jigsaw. This is Hella Five Cap. And this is the Kobe Bryant film room. Jigsaw Cut Em Up edition. And I'll hop.